Investigators talk to other pilots at the company, including First Officer Janine Urban. How well did you know the pilots? I flew with the captain, and I was good friends with the First Officer. I thought very highly of the First Officer Frank. I knew the flight attendant Barbie and liked her a lot. It was a very emotional thing to hear that both of them had been killed. What sort of pilot was the captain? I'd say average. In the aviation community, when someone is characterized as an average pilot, that usually means he's not too good. Why is that? The captain really prided himself on getting there on time. It was not uncommon for him to take risks. Looks like we've got some weather. Shall I call for deviation? Doesn't look too bad. We'll be fine. According to Air Illinois pilots, the captain would often fly too close or through dangerous storms to save flight time. If I made any comments or suggestions about a safety issue like the thunderstorms or anything else, he would do something spiteful just to prove that he was the captain. In order to keep schedule, he'd also speed up, which would set off the overspeed alarm. Pull the circuit breaker, would you? What? Really? Pilot said he would order them to disable the overspeed warning so that they could fly faster. It was always about getting there faster. The captain's behavior is troublesome. We wanted to know if the company, the airline, was putting undue pressure on the pilots to make the schedule. This pressure to get there on time, was it from management? No. It was all the captain. The interviews with the other pilots indicated that there was no undue pressure to skirt the rules. In the case of the captain, that pressure was self-imposed. Investigators conclude that Captain Smith often stretched the rules. And what about the first officer? Frank was the best. And he knew the plane and its systems really well. So why didn't the first officer speak up when Captain Smith made the decision to carry on? Illinois 710, do you intend to return to Springfield? Negative. Continuing to Carbondale, 3,000 feet. And at no time did we hear the first officer challenge the captain's decision to go on to Carbondale. We found this very perplexing. I asked how he could fly with the captain because he took so many chances. And he said, oh, I just try to keep an eye on the situation and not let him get us into anything that I can't get us out of. We're losing everything down to 13 volts. Watch my altitude, Frank. Boy, that didn't work out very well at all. The captain should have made the decision to return to the Springfield airport. And if so, none of this would have happened. Thank you.